Okay. Okay, I guess that means we can start. <clears throat> okay, um, just to give you kind of a preview of what we want to accomplish today, I'm going to go ahead and start with a real quick, like five minute review of some of the nuggets I did during this uh, 40 day challenge on the Wednesday call. Bev's then going to, for about five minutes, um, share a review of her nuggets of when she talked, the things she talked about. <clears throat> and then um, I have a, like a, a, a five minute uh, quick testimony of something that occurred while I was praying in tongues on Monday, which I have never experienced before. It was pretty interesting. And then we have a testimony by uh, Robert Waldrop. Um, and Waldrop. Okay, sorry. And then after that, we'll open it up for other comments, uh, testimonies, uh, any questions. But before we start, uh, would anyone like to open us up in prayer? I'll just open whoever wants to volunteer. I will. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you so much. Hmm. And Lord, we want to learn more and more about you each and every day. Be closer to you each and every day. So thank you, God, for uh, showing us these things to Darren, Darren and uh, Bev and uh, Melissa, Lord. Uh, hmm. And I just ask for you to touch even each and every one of us this morning, this afternoon and uh, show us even more and receive even more and more and more and more. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your love, and all the perfect gifts you give us. In your holy name we pray. Jesus, amen. 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 <clears throat> amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, just one uh, administrative thing real quick. Uh, Melissa, it'd probably be good if we post again the videos from the beginning um, on Signal and maybe also on, on the Church Center for those that maybe have missed some of those. Uh, we're going to do some real quick reviews right now, but the full uh, the full sessions, uh, would probably good to have those available. So we, we can talk about that after. Um, <clears throat> Well, yes. first of all, I, I started out <clears throat> a couple, a few weeks ago um, talking about sowing in the spirit uh, as opposed to sowing to the flesh. And Galatians 6, 8 to 9 talks about the one who sows in the spirit is going to reap eternal life as opposed to the one who sows in the flesh or reap corruption. And so... Some of the things that we were hoping to accomplish during this 40 day or 40 day, yeah, 40 day uh, praying in the Holy Ghost challenge was a changed heart and life, a greater understanding of the will of God for our life, answers to prayer for ourselves uh, or others that seem impossible, going deeper in our understanding and revelation of the word and increasing our intimacy with our heavenly father just just a, a renewed sensitivity to spiritual things and a, a strength to, to overcome any per perceived limitations uh, more fruit of the spirit in our lives a deeper love for people uh, and an intense passion to share the gospel and we talked about how it's very easy when we're, we're um, trying to establish some new patterns in our lives and trying to be consistent. Uh, it's, it's real easy to grow weary. Uh, the Bible talks about to not grow weary, weary and well-doing that we're going to reap if we don't faint. And some of us have been in seasons of really long battles where we've grown weary and really tired. And uh, we talked about how the Lord wants to bring us into a season of refreshing. He wants to increase our, le our level of peace, you know, where there's been struggle and turmoil, where there's just certain things that we just haven't been able to see victory in. And it seems to have robbed our peace. The Lord wants to give us peace in those situations. And we talked about how the Holy Spirit 
has been given as our counselor, our comforter. And he said, peace, I will leave with you. And this is John 14, 26 to 27. He says, my peace, I give you. Let not your heart be troubled. And then we, and then we further talked about how uh, in line with this refreshing, Acts 3, 19 talks about there are times or seasons of refreshing that God wants to give us uh, that come from the presence of the Lord, which, which, which involves repenting, being converted. Uh, and there's areas, repenting may, basically means changing our mind and going in a different direction. That's one of the uh, one of the helps that the Holy Spirit gives us as we pray in tongues. He helps us change. He helps renew our mind, as especially as we join that in with the scriptures, so that we can get refreshed. And we we talked about how revival is another term for refreshing. We don't have to wait for revival. We can have revival now by praying in tongues. And getting the rest that we need when we become weary. We can get that refreshing now. We can have our own revival by praying in tongues. And so then we then from there we went on to talk about uh, <clears throat> in Romans 8, 26 to 28, how the Holy Spirit does help our weakness. There is a plan, there is a purpose God has created for our lives that the Holy Spirit has been given the responsibility of being the overseer of God's plan for our life to help ensure that it takes place. And the, the, Lord, the Lord knew when he created us that we would need help in fulfilling our purpose and plan for the reason we're on the earth. So he gives us the Holy Spirit and a very powerful weapon the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to, you know, mighty in God. And praying in tongues is a mighty weapon for tearing down strongholds, things that have come into our life in the way we think. Uh, <clears throat> God has given us a tool as we pray in the Holy Spirit to tear those things down, tear down those strongholds, tear down those things that are keeping us from the perfect will of God, that which God wants to accomplish in us. And we, we also uh, had a different perspective on understanding what it means. The context of the scripture in Romans 8, uh, where it says, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. The context of that really is praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is what causes all things to work together for good. Because the Holy Spirit is working in and through us the perfect will of God to arrange situations to work to our good. Mm -hmm. So that's the context for that scripture. And then uh, finally, I, I talked about how when we're praying in the Spirit, uh, is 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Uh, it talks about we're, we're speaking out mysteries, uh, things that we may not totally understand you know, a lot of people say, I don't know what the will of God is. It's a mystery to me. I, I don't understand why I'm here on the earth. Well, we're praying out mysteries. We're praying out purpose. We're praying out the perfect will of God. The Holy Spirit's interceding for us. Jesus is interceding for us in heaven. I mean, how, how good can that get? Uh, we have Jesus and the Holy Spirit interceding before the Father for us to see that this this perfect plan has worked out in our life. We also we also talked about stewardship in uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2, where it says it's part of a steward that he be found faithful. <clears throat> and the responsibility of a steward is to faithfully steward the process of speaking the mysteries of Christ by praying in tongues. And we also talked about in praying in tongues is generational. The purpose and plan for our life is part of a generational plan that God has created for those that came before us and the, 
us and for those that will follow after. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs 13, 22 says, Good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. And the greatest inheritance that we can give to our kids is to steward the gift of the Holy Ghost that has been given to us to pray the perfect will of God, to pray and see <clears throat> that those that we love, because the Holy Spirit searches our heart, he knows what's of concern to us, and he prays that out. He prays the perfect will of God for everything that concerns us. And that includes our lives, our kids, our family members, other people that God has placed on our heart. Just being a steward of that, it talks about the final scripture, and then I'll turn this over to Bev. In Luke 12, 42 to 43, it says, uh, Then the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward whom the master will make rule over his house uh, servants to give them their portion of, food, portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is the servant whom the master will find doing so when he comes. Who is that faithful person? And so I just really challenge you guys, even as uh, Friday is the last day of this uh, challenge, keep going. There's more to come. All right, Bev. <clears throat> Can I just ask, what was that last scripture, darling? Uh, the last scripture was tw Luke, tw Luke 12, 42 to 43. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <clears throat> trying to get a microphone up closer. All right, okay, Hopefully good. you can hear me. <laughs> um, I did two nuggets. Nugget number three was talking about making ourselves a living sacrifice. That comes from, of course, Romans 2, 12, 1 and 2. <clears throat> we are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and be not conformed or pressed into a mold, to, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind to prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God. Once again, we're getting back to how can we know the perfect will of God? And that is when you take these these verses in context with the rest of Romans 12 and Romans 8, you can see by putting it together, and I, I can't go into all those details today, but if you listen to Nugget 3, you'll see how it's very closely and almost completely done by the Holy Spirit. And that's done through reading scripture and him illuminating it. It's done much, much, much is done through the, when you're praying in the Holy Spirit. So, as I saw it, a living sacrifice is something that we do by our own choice to offer ourselves. Now, as we do that, according to the scripture of Romans 12, 1 and 2, he searches the thoughts and intents of our heart. We know from other scriptures, he helps our weaknesses, those that we cannot do in our own strength, by interceding for us to the Father. That's Romans 8, 26, where it talks about we can't don't know how to pray as we ought, but he does it. Um, he edifies us by weeding out patterns and systems of thought that enslave us and, and replacing them with new life. And that's in Rome, starts with Romans 8, 1, and, and it goes on through there. And then we grow into the mind of Christ, sustaining us and being a powerful son or daughter of God by obedience. So our part is to live is to present ourselves as a living sacrifice and one of the greatest ways we can do that is by praying in the holy spirit he it is his own language and he he decides what from what he receives from the father what we needs to be prayed according to searching our heart and the intents and thoughts of our heart so as we're doing that our, when we do our part we enable the holy spirit to do what he is designed to do. And we just talked, I just talked a little bit about that. Something else I covered in, in Nugget 3 was impasses, overcoming those things. Those are the things that can keep us from staying in Holy Ghost prayer. And um, we know very well, you know, our own personal things and, and you know, well, I'm too tired today to do it or I'm too busy and so forth. There's also um, that great temptation to fall out of prayer. Gradually, it just gets shorter and shorter. And the devil will try everything he can to get us out of prayer. 
because he does not understand this magnificent heavenly language that the Holy Spirit is praying through us. So this is like excluding him from one of the most important things that we can do. And of course, we're talking about our personal prayer life now. Um, if we view our time with the Holy Spirit as a scheduled obligation, okay, well, I did 45 minutes yesterday, so I think today I'll do an hour and 15 mm -hmm. minutes, and that'll make two hours. You kind of get the idea. Trying to measure ourselves and make sure we're staying to a strict standard. Then it becomes a scheduled obligation. You know, we can make it like a ritual where, where rituals will eventually wear us out because they're usually a self-imposed goal in that ritual. And we decide then whether it's worthwhile or not and why. That's our own understanding. Um, another impasse would be not seeing God answer in the way or timing we want or we expect him to when we're praying about something. Um, another one would be struggling with surrendering our comfort that can be difficult as he shines light on the negative things he wants us to help us overcome and he will start to do that um our enemy and natural reasoning doesn't want us to realize that if we persevere in prayer holy ghost prayer especially the holy spirit will give you the power to overcome the things that we want to overcome. Most of us, when we go into prayer, we have certain ideas of what we would like to happen and maybe changes in us. But the Holy Spirit is an expert at executing and praying to God for us, even the things that we don't know are there. And then he knows how to draw them out. Mm -hmm. In the edification process, he's, he's building us up and preparing us for what he wants to do in us. Mm -hmm. So um, he'll also build your faith through the process, you grow, grow to really trust God more and more. And if you search the scriptures about an issue, he'll also bring understanding wisdom to you because he will illuminate those scriptures that you're reading. So, uh, so some of the responses that have helped me to overcome impasses like this. And, and once again, let me tell you what an impasse is defined as. That will probably help. A spiritual plateau or a dry place, some people call it a wilderness experience and so forth, that generally occurs just before God is ready to move you to a higher place in his spirit. Maybe you're going to increase in understanding and in the ability to read the scriptures. Maybe you're going to understand better things that are happening in your life. But whatever the next level that he wants to bring you to that plateau is like going to fight us it's going to, to be sometimes it's just our own flesh like we just talked about keeping us from doing that just surrendering ourselves and spending time with the holy spirit so some things that can help overcome is to make an, a decision to keep praying in the holy spirit pray while you're reading the scriptures you can pray in the holy spirit with worship music playing if that helps you you keep offering yourself as a living sacrifice, no matter how you initially feel. I know when I started, I didn't feel a whole lot, but it wasn't long until I could sense the presence of God praying through me. It was a couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> disengage your national re reasoning and trust him as you pray in tongues. Don't try to figure out what this language is saying. Just yield yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. And remind yourself of what scriptures say when, while you're doing this. And often I've gone back and looked at a few scriptures in Romans and, and just, you know, Corinthians where he's talking, Paul is talking about what the Holy Spirit does through us. And it's magnificent. He knows all the thoughts and intents of our heart. He knows the things that seem obscure to us. And he also knows our weak um, blind spots. Mm -hmm. So... The Holy Spirit is never meant to be a shore, but a precious time of transformation and fellowship. And then nugget five was, much of it was a testimony that I gave of how the Lord is teaching me to walk not by my natural reasoning, but actually to walk by the Spirit, to listen to Him and learn to see things in life through the eyes of Scripture, the eyes of God, how He sees things. So the truth that I wanted to emphasize in that particular nugget was God designed natural law to be subordinate or subject to spiritual law. 
In other words, spiritual law over transcends natural law. And I, I uh, defined what natural law is. It's what governs the circumstances around us, causing us to, to go before or against it. Some examples would be like the plant and animal kingdoms that God created. They thrive with the right conditions of food and sunshine and so forth, oxygen, and they die with the wrong conditions. Um, sowing and reaping, a farmer must sow living seed to reap it. Um, negative cycles we start, such as with our health, if we begin to not take good care of us, the results are going to be that we're going to see our, our health go down. Those are all examples of natural law. So spiritual law is what the Holy Spirit brings. And if we're solely driven and living by what we see and feel in the natural um, world, we're going to be greatly, greatly limited in what we in the truth that we can see. So... I talked a lot about um, what the Holy Spirit wants us to do and learn through uh, uh, walking in the Spirit. And praying in, the tongue, in tongues is just choosing to let that powerful Spirit of God pray through us. Praying the mind of God into existence that He has known all before we were even conceived. He's known what, we were, what our purpose and destiny was. And God's divine plan is being enforced in us as spiritual law. The Holy Spirit makes more and us more and more aware of what is spiritually happening. So, um, and then I gave a long testimony, which I won't review here. But the, the, the summary of all that was that God's created natural law for order in the world. It is subject to spiritual law in our lives. Holy Spirit is the executor. I love that word, executor of that spiritual law. And we access it by allowing him to work in us by speaking in tongues and obeying what he shows us. We can learn to walk by the Spirit. And our prayer partner, the Holy Spirit, with his language that he gives us is one of the best ways that we can see acceleration quickly in our understanding of what God has given us. All right. So, amen. Last recap. Yeah, and so, and we will, we will try to go ahead and and post the uh, each of the nuggets uh, with the testimonies. Just not only the teaching, but there were really good testimonies that people gave. That yeah. it'd really be good to if you haven't listened to, or if you haven't been able to be on all the Wednesday calls, or if you want to review the ones that you did were able to attend. This, this will be good. We'll try to get those posted. Um, just want to transition just real quick so we give Robert a chance to give his testimony. Uh, just want to give you a real quick uh, just recap of something that happened to me on Monday, which I had really never, ever experienced this before. This was interesting. I typically get up at 7 in the morning uh, to start my time of praying in tongues for an hour or so. And and so I was I was praying in tongues and it was really, um, I was really struggling with it. Uh, I really felt there was something really oppressing or opposing me uh, in the spirit. And I knew it was the enemy. And I, so I just kept praying and praying and praying and praying uh, until finally I, I felt something just break. Uh, and this was like at the hour, <laughs> I felt something break. I just kept pressing and pressing and pressing. And at that point, I just, started just these thoughts which i really felt were thoughts some of the things that i had been praying and i i just had this intuitive notion to start repeating in english some of the thoughts that i was having mm -hmm. and the thoughts were restore you know all that the enemy has robbed from you he's taken from you got you know god says if the ant, when the thief is caught, he has to re restore seven times. And so I just started saying out loud and really loud, forcefully, restore, restore, restore. And as I was doing that, I had this sense that I was actually entering into the intercession of what the Holy Spirit was doing, had been doing when I was praying in tongues. And I just kept saying the word restore over and over and over. 
And as I kept saying that, I kept having this sense of the presence of the Lord just overwhelming me. I was feeling wave upon wave upon wave of his presence. And the more I would say restore, the more intense I felt the Lord's presence with me. And then I began to start praying in tongues. And it's almost like a different prayer language I was praying. And then I would then I would pray in English. What I what I felt was what I was it, it was like the interpretation of what I was praying in tongues. And this went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. And as I kept doing it over and over, the presence of the Lord kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, I kept, kept feeling waves of his presence. And so um, it finally came to a point, you know, and I was interceding for my family and, and different things the Lord was bringing to my mind. As I was doing this, tears were, tears were flowing. I really felt like I tapped into uh, the intercession. I, I felt like I tapped into something in God that I really hadn't really experienced before. And so when it was all said and done, I had actually prayed for another hour and didn't even realize it. It's like I lost all track of time. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, sometimes our greatest victory comes you know, where it's like, an, like Bev was talking about an impasse. And if we will push through that, push through the resistance, there is a blessing in God. And even after the fact, even, uh, throughout that day, and even this week, I've just felt a greater sensitivity to the Lord. Uh, something broke. I'm not sure all that took place. Uh, I just really feel like there was a breakthrough. I feel like something shifted in, in our family. Um, and so I'm just really looking to see the testimony of things to come of what that really, of what really took place. But just be encouraged. There's more uh, that's available than we really take advantage of in God. He really wants to, the Holy Spirit really wants to be our helper. So anyway, I, that, I just wanted to share that with you. And um, so at this point, we can transition to Robert if he's on. Yeah. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, all right. So thank you. Um, I will kind of move quickly here. If anybody doesn't catch something that I'm saying, just catch me at uh, service sometime or uh, call me later. Um, so I'm an analyst. Um, I'm a high-level analyst, kind of uh, mid-level executive uh, analyst. And so uh, I'm an entrepreneur as well, which basically means I try to hear God and apply that to business. <laughs> and um, so um, I, I lived in a, a prayer community called IHOP KC for some years. Um, and my time is very important to me, and outcomes are very important to me. I really uh, have a missional background, so I expect to see results. So what I'm going to share is a testimony from the perspective of analyzing tongues and whether tongues actually produces value. Um, have you all heard of the word glossolalia before? Um, if you have, that's great. It's, uh, it's the theological term. It's a Greek word composed of glossa and lalia or lalia, meaning tongue talking as a dialect. And so if you ever want to study the theology of glossolalia, that's the term if you were to look at, say, academic or theological papers. And there's quite a body of these papers since Azusa Street. And there's been a lot of people, including intellectuals, who spent a lot of time analyzing tongues. And um, so for me, um, personal disciplines and corporate di disciplines I've identified are essential to an empowered church. And this is my own experiences. I'm just speaking from testimony. Um, if, if I've ever experienced something from the Lord, I have, I think, universally been able to tie that back. Um, 90 plus percent of the time to spiritual disciplines that either I was taking part in, someone else was taking part in, some body of believers was taking part in. And so we all sit back and we ask God, what, what am I supposed to be in life? And um, 
I believe, were to curate lifestyles and disciplines around um, what God has called us to be. And so we will select from a variety of spiritual disciplines that he could provide us uh, and has provided us to to take part in. And uh, also for me, intimacy with God and, and growing in revelation of God are particular keys for the mountain that I'm called to or the mountains that I'm called to and also for probably the personal healing needs that I have. Um, So historically, even though I started praying in tongues when I was in my teens, it's been, uh, it was kind of taught to me, and I saw it as an augmentation tool. It's like, this is a tool particularly powerful in a corporate context um, that you want to have in your tool belt. And I'm not saying that's the right way to think about it. I'm just saying that's what I was taught. But other spiritual disciplines are confessions, contem- uh, contemplative prayer, listening prayer, studying the word, praying the word, intimacy prayer, scripture memorization, gazing prayer. And I've experienced the Lord um, powerfully in all of those. So here's where I get transparent. Um, I have to say that the most power that I've experienced from the Lord maybe because of somebody else's tongues or discipline has been in other types of prayer. Um, However, um, you know, when I heard that Sid Roth uh, tries to dedicate two hours a day to prayer in tongues, and he's a very business-minded person, he's very strategic, and then I read Dave Roberson's book, I was somewhat inspired. I thought, well, maybe there's something more to tongues than what I've been taught. And um, I do think that Dave Roberson's calling is different than mine. And he, in his anecdote of life, um, emphasized praying in tongues uh, in a much larger block of time, uh, you know, for the period that he talks about receiving particular power. He, He was doing things like eight hours a day or more. And I've had friends who were called to full-time ministry who would do those large blocks of time. And I'm not saying we wouldn't uh, gain from that. In fact, I think if we all dropped everything and decided to pray eight hours in tongues every day, we would receive fruit from that. Um, however, I think it's, it's really important to understand and calculate how much and, and what mix of spiritual disciplines is going to yield the results that God wants you to walk in. Now, before you think I'm shutting you down in personal or uh, paralysis analysis, I should tell you that I grew up in Peoria, Illinois, which uh, was a cessationist town and has many religious challenges. My mother and I uh, went to a church that kicked out everyone who prayed in tongues. So we, we found the one church in town that would allow us to pray in tongues that we found that we knew about. And that church would pray every week in tongues. And uh, so getting to my testimony, um, when I first moved to Raleigh um, a few years ago, because God told us to move out here for reasons we're still learning, I decided that I would set aside one hour a day for speed walking and tongues. This was before I ever met anyone at Bethel City. And so I was doing that about four to six days per week. And several days per week, I would do one and a half to two hours. And the combination was really great for me because I'm extremely busy. I'm often working 16 hours a day. And I've got two little kids and I have rental property and I have other business I'm doing. So I'm always looking for a way to leverage and get the most out of my time and also have a great intimate relationship with my wife and the Lord. And so when I did that uh, and made that emphasis, not just periodically praying in tongues, but uh, or doing it in a corporate setting only, um, or even just using it like your baby babbling prayer when you, uh, you know, you're feeling insecure (laughs) or you don't have anything else better to do, uh, but gave it the dedicated and periodic focus, it did unlock and restore certain levels and increase the, I would call it the technical or uh, intensity of my dream life. Dreams are like the number one way that I've experienced confident communication from the Lord. I received um, communication from the Lord in other ways, but dreams are the ones that have been most clear. So I love writing down my dreams. 
So in the midst of what I was talking about, this hour of day goal, my dream life got uh, enhanced in the Lord. And I received probably the second most directive dream that I've had in my life about my calling. This is only a few years ago. And I received a higher quantity of dreams. Um, I still do these prayer walks, and I've generally been tracking with your 30-minute challenge. Um, and I believe that it's uh, really powerful to turn on uh, Scripture while you're praying in tongues, because the nice thing about tongues is you can do two or – I'm a multitasker. I can usually do three or four things at once, and so I can do tongues. I can read the Word, and I can do other work at the same time if I'm listening to the Word. So um, – in that period of time, tongues uh, facilitated a great deal of inner healing for me, like self uh, and Holy Spirit guided inner healing. And what happened was God would use tongues to help uncover areas in my heart where I needed to process the past or um, pray for someone, forgive someone. And, uh, and in those times, he also was able to sensitize my heart and help me to hear uh, his, his, you know, what he was trying to tell me from the word more clearly. And there was also an inner warfare component where I feel like the Lord was leveraging tongues to uh, attack strongholds of false thought in my heart and enhance my listening prayer capability. So it felt like I could discern the Lord's voice in certain inner processing areas more clearly. Um, I've also felt tongues place pressure against oppressive spirits that were trying to attack me. Like if you've had a depressive episode or bad set of experiences, I felt that it wasn't overwhelming. Like if I were to latch onto something by faith uh, and receive the word in a particularly, you know, divine way um, in those experiences, but it was like a, a, a steady strengthening um, against oppressive spirits and, uh, aligned meditative focus. Uh, I've also seen corporate prayer in tongues bring regional impact of warfare and protection. And what's interesting is I feel like sometimes we take for granted the protection that we receive from praying in tongues. I believe there is a level of that. Again, I think other disciplines mixed with it brings an enhanced power based on my experience. But I've also seen that it's got a regional impact. So I've seen when corporate entities pray in tongues, other individuals receiving the impact of that. Um, and so sometimes, you know, we're not just praying for ourselves when we pray in tongues and we don't realize it. And that's where there's a call to faith. So um, there's a lower proclivity to receiving lies that I've been able to measure and notice when I pray in tongues sort of a healing and rest complex for the soul in some ways, just a settling out. Um, and so it, tongues has not been my number one to date, but since it is an emphasis at Bethel City, and I think the rarest thing on the earth is to find a corporate body of believers that will dedicate to any of the good spiritual disciplines, I'm very excited to invest the next year or two, if it takes, to you know, see and, and, and believe for the results that God wants to do in tongues. Now, I do believe that if we turn on our faith in our heart about how God will empower us through tongues, through the reading of the word and meditation, and these types of testimony experiences, it will increase and magnify the effect that the tongues have. So um, Keep in mind that tongues does not preclude other disciplines or activities. If you can do three or four different spiritual disciplines at the same time, I've done that. I've done meditation, praying in tongues, and listening to the word all at the same time, and then injected confessions at the same time. And I've literally seen like breakthroughs as a part of combining spiritual disciplines at the same time. It's sometimes tiring. You have to take a nap after, and that's okay. Don't overdo it enjoy the rest component. But um, for us as a corporate body, it brings a spiritual focus because other types of praying and, you know, and other disciplines oftentimes take more mental processing and alignment. So the nice thing in a corporate setting is we can all agree by praying in tongues 
uh, in a way that's faster and easier to onboard than other types mm-hmm. of prayer oftentimes. Um, and tongues is a phase one fallback prayer. If you don't have your Bible with you and you want to achieve something in Holy Spirit, you've always got tongues and any scriptures you've memorized. And it allows Jesus to intervene in any context um, and can bring the initial phases of deliverance, I believe, uh, from witchcraft or demon affliction. So it is a way to keep the fire on the altar lit. And for those like me who wondered if tongues was the right investment, I would encourage you to test out the spiritual discipline of tongues um, in agreement with what's happening at Bethel City and you know, the Lord says to test them in, in different things like tithing and spiritual disciplines. I don't think we should test them like with unbelief. I'm talking about see what the results are and, um, and just enjoy together watching the Lord prove to us what he's promised in his word. So that's what I wanted to share. And I bless you all. All right. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, um, Robert. That was Wow, that was Great. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's open, open it up for uh, a couple. We'll go a little bit over since this is our last um, last session. And, and you know, if you have to to leave, bless you. You can drop. But does anybody have any questions or further comments? I never knew. I'm sorry. Were you going to say something, Kim? I never knew that dream part because I I'm. Real, I never remember my dreams. I think maybe like I might have one, but I never remember it. And um, and lately, well, the Lord had had been speaking to me about an issue, and then that night I had a dream about the the same thing all night. It seems like I dreamed the same situation or the same. A subject all night long i didn't know that that was part of you know part of the uh the fruit of praying in tongues you know yeah I, if you can still hear me i think i think it is i think uh you know the grace that the lord puts on us uh for different disciplines all works together uh-huh. so your experience may be different but um Every one of us dreams, unless we have a health problem, every one of us dreams. So God will unlock those dreams for you by faith, just like he will unlock hearing his voice and supernatural miracles and power. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, very good. So are you seeing, Robert, that that's something we should really... I don't really turn that much either, but um, is that something that we should really pray for me and see that? I dreams? don't think there's anything wrong with asking God to, to g- give you dreams. Dreams, according to uh, uh, what's the pastor from Bethel Church out in Reading, dreams are uh, hearing God 101. Um, they're... Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he says they're Christianity 101, which is interesting because they didn't come for me until much later, probably because I didn't know that, that such things could be unlocked. But I believe that uh, just by asking the Lord, he will begin to give you and increase your dreams. And, you know, what's funny is these days when I get them, they're almost like puzzles and they don't even seem, you know, profound at first. But you write them down when you get them, and then you start to unlock and unravel the story. And you start to go, there's no way this is anyone but God speaking to me. And so I declare for everyone on this call that God would unlock his Holy Spirit dreams into your night hour and clarify his greatest feelings for you in those times. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Do you mind if I inject the word here concerning dreams. Go ahead. We do have the scripture that back that. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me. Okay, let me give you the word of God. Job 33 15 through 18. It says, King James Virgin, in a dream, in a vision of the night, deep sleep falleth upon men. And so upon the bed. Then he opened the ears of men, 
and sealeth their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Now that's what it says about dreams. Job 33, 15 through 17, all the way to 18. If you want to look it up and read it for yourself, you can. Yeah, can you give that scripture again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, that will be Job. You're breaking up so bad, it's hard to hear. Yeah. Uh, some other. Oh. Say it again. 33. Oh. Job 33. Does anybody 33. know? Job 33. Job 33. 15 through 18. Job 33. 15 through 18. Fantastic. I got it. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, just some practical things. Um, when you go to, and I heard Curry Blake say this and some others uh, that have, you know, spoken on dreams connected to pre uh, praying in tongues, reading the scriptures, and uh, like Robert said, uh, incorporating spiritual disciplines. If you, the last thing before you do, before you go to bed at night, if you read and meditate on scripture, pray in tongues, um, listen to worship, whatever, it will prep you for God to speak to you uh, supernaturally. And, and then uh, when you wake up, uh, the first thing you do, if you have like a pad of paper beside your bed, that's an act of faith. It's saying, God, I know you're going to speak to me, so I'm ready to write it down. Or any kind of recording device. And then the first thing you do, when you are in, when you first wake up, you're in the alpha state. And that's when it's more easily, at, you're able to recall things. Immediately write it down. Don't even try to interpret it. Just write down what God gave you in that dream. And then you can pray into it and ask God for an understanding later. That's good. All right. Any uh, other comments? Uh, yes. Melissa. Yeah, I just, yes, I have a comment. Uh, what um, Robert mentioned about uh, uh, having different disciplines, but I just wanted to make a comment like, you know, um, what I've noticed for myself and many others, like um, when you pray in tongues, it actually enhances the other spiritual disciplines. Like, you know, as you pray in tongues, it's going to take, as you, when you pray in tongues, you're praying in English or your understanding is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be enhanced. When you pray in tongues, if you're, you know, you, you're, you know, one of your, um, the things that are big for you is, is worship, your worship is going to go to the next exactly. level. So pretty much tongues is just, it's, it's almost something that just uh, enhances like every other spiritual discipline if you you know you're reading what the word will go to the next level so it's just um like robert said you know just um doing all the disciplines together like the tongues it, it just it brings everything up to the next level so i just want to encourage everyone um with that amen amen all right great all right well we're almost at the uh one o'clock hour so i'm just going to go ahead and uh end this for today. Thank you all uh, for participating on the calls, for participating in the 40-day journey. Like I said, it ends on Friday. We will try to post the nuggets and sessions that we've had each Wednesday, so you can go back and look at those uh, in the event that you want to review what you've already seen or if you haven't been able to attend any of the sessions. <clears throat> so you guys... Just want to uh, pray a blessing on you and um, Marlon, do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add, I just love what everyone is saying. And one thing I'll say is it's also important, like have a mindset of expectation as you're praying in tongues, like Beverly said, part of the mm -hmm. benefits of praying in tongues. Even when you go to sleep in my, in my life, I, I expect to have dreams you know according to job 33 that job 33 that god comes and seals his, his instruction in the night so have an expectation which and i'll say one thing the bible says this three remain faith hope and love but the greatest is love that word hope in the greek means expectation so expectation is one is a pillar 
as a new creation. So having an expectation in everything we do, as we're praying in tongues, I'm going to be edified. I'm going to be built up. So that's one thing I'll just add to everything. Expectation. Expect dreams. Expect the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'll just be encouraged. Just say something. Yeah, can, yeah, go ahead. Can I just say Amen. something? Did you want to say something, Sarita? Oh, no, I'm just saying amen. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, real briefly, I just want to say how much this has meant to me. Uh, I didn't even get on for the first time until last week, and uh, I just kept getting, and uh, I've been speaking in tongues for 35 years, and I'm learning so much since we started uh, the Curry Blake tapes. And very, my growth has just gone. And once... I know Martha, uh, uh, Marcus, Marcus, uh, we were on the morning call is months ago, maybe even last year. And the Lord told him to pray for people to accelerate their, their tongue in, um, uh, hour. anyway, all I know is my tongue just took off <laughs> ever since, but this is what you're speaking about today. After we got off the phone last week, so many of these, now I've had many, you know, some of these things, but uh, so many of these things came in just powerhouse through me uh, last week or this past week. And just uh, the day we got off into the next day, I couldn't stop speaking in tongues. The Lord was showing me, giving to me, you know, uh, open eye visions and um, all these different things, which I've had, but it was just so. It, it just manifested so tremendously. So uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you guys. It's just been, just the past two weeks, it's been amazing. And also, especially Robert, you've been, that was crazy today. <laughs> yeah, crazy good. good. Yeah. And since, and since um, uh, Kim said that, I think it's a good time just to say thank you so much to Be Bev and yeah. And Darwin for just leading us out yes. of this and just, you know, just pouring out your heart mm -hmm. um, and just encouragement and, and wisdom. We so appreciate yes. it. We love you so much. Yes. So everyone just, you know, just thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Spirit Amen. Spiritual Good hug. job, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bless you guys. We love you, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Marlon. Love you all. Hey, Mar Marlon. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> um, Marlon. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> hey. I think Darwin and Babe, did you want to uh, close in a blessing? I just wanted yes. to. Yeah, please, please do. At least it will be on the recording. <laughs> we didn't want to miss out of that. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, Lord, we just bless what you're doing in our lives and each person that has participated, and even for the ones that will listen to these recordings after the fact. Lord, just we just pray, stir up the gift yes. of God yes. that is within yes. us, that Amen. we would become more aware of what you want to pray through our lives and the impact that you want us to have on this world. I just declare blessing and breakthrough and increase. And Lord, even what you did to me on Monday, Lord, through me, restore, 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 restore. Yeah. Everything the enemy has robbed from your people. I just <laughs> declare restore back to them even sevenfold and that there would come such yes. increase that they would not even they would they would be so full of joy uh, unspeakable mm -hmm. full of glory that they would it, realize that you are a big god and you have big things that you want to do Thanks. and you're Amen. using us for people so blessings 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 Bless. and Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Darwin. Amen. Thank you, Beth. Thank, yes. you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, uh, Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Love you all. Love you. Love, 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 you. love you guys. Amen. Bye. 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 <laughs>